Now, an alternative to Microsoft Excel might be a Texas Instruments graphing calculator. What you see on the screen here is a Texas Instruments TI-83+. Let's go over some of the basics on how to operate these graphing calculators. First of all, every button has a primary and sometimes secondary and sometimes tertiary and even more functions. The primary function of every button is what's on the button. For example, the button on the lower left hand corner is the on button. You click it and it turns the calculator on. And from here, you know, you can do all sorts of wonderful calculations that you would come to love about a calculator. Notice for this on button, the words off are written above it and it's color coded to this orange or amber color. This represents the secondary function and it is color coded. Notice there's a button labeled second on your calculator. To turn off your calculator, you want to access the secondary function of the on button, which is off. So you first click second, and notice when you do that, let me demonstrate that again, when you click the second button, the cursor here that's blinking will change to an up arrow, meaning you're applying the secondary feature of some button. Then you select the button that you want to access. So when I click on on, which I'm selecting the secondary feature for, it turns the calculator off. So let's turn the calculator back on. And for this course, there's only a handful of buttons you'll ever want to use. Now, of course, here are the regular calculator buttons. The numbers, the basic arithmetic operations. This is the exponent button, this caret above the division sign. So if I type in 5 caret 2, that's 5 to the second power. Yeah, which is 25. Or certainly you could have typed in 5 and the square button as well. The caret button's useful if we ever have to calculate something like 1.03 to the 360th power, which is 1.03 times itself 360 times. Now, basic arithmetic operations then. After you type in some values here, you might be wary of all the noise on the screen, so certainly you can click this clear button, and that will wipe the screen of any lines that are displayed. One feature about your graphing calculators I want you to notice is, if I were to type in some calculation, like 90 minus 14, or even better, how about 188? minus 114. I get a difference of 74. If I want to divide that by 8, look what I did. I first found this difference of 188 minus 114. When I click the enter, which is analogous to saying, okay, what does this evaluate to? It gives me the difference. Now, if I want to use this result 74, I want to divide it by 8. Instead of typing 74 divided by 8, I simply push the division sign and the calculator assumes that you want the answer from the previous calculation to be plugged into the next calculation so the answer divided by 8 is 9.25 you can verify that by explicitly typing out 74 divided by 8 now as I mentioned before there's only a certain number of buttons that you're really going to be cons you know, concerned about specifically for this course one of which is the stat button. The stat button contains a number of functions available to you for statistical analysis. When you click the stat button, you're presented with this menu system. There are three options or three submenus. The edit menu within the stat features allow you to edit a data list, to sort ascending a data list, sort descending to clear the list, and to set up your lists. Now, when you're in the edit submenu, you can use the right and left arrow buttons to traverse through the different submenus. So if I click to the right, I get the calculation submenu, in which you can do some calculations for one variable stats, meaning if you have just a single list of data, you can get some interesting descriptive statistics from it. 
two variable stats, if you have matched data or two lists of data that you want a number of descriptive statistics for, you can click this one, and so forth and so on. The rest of these relate to regression analysis, curve best fitting, which we'll be doing towards the end of the semester. And then if you click on right again, the right arrow, you get calculations to help find hypothesis test values. We'll be getting into this as well with chapter 8 and chapter 7. Now, if I want to get out of this menu system, I can click the quit button, or sometimes people just hit the clear button. You can also do quit, which is a secondary feature of mode, so whatever you want to do. Now, another feature you'll be interested in using is this feature DISTR, which is a secondary function for the VARS button here. So if you access that, you can see there's only two submenus, but it's really those functions listed under the DISTR that you're going to be interested in. This is going to be of importance to us when we get into chapter 6, 7, and 8, and 9. You can scroll up and down through all of them. Notice, when I scroll up and down, if I start up at the very top, there's an arrow button here next to the 7, which means there's more to choose from down below. So I can select my ar down arrow to see more of them. And notice I have an up arrow and a down arrow now, which means, hey, keep on scrolling through them if you're interested. Right? And we'll get into these a little later in the semester. Let's quit out of this page. So second, quit. And then finally, another button or function that you'll be interested in is to graph certain things, like a histogram. So graphs for stats is a secondary function for this y equals. Every single button below the screen, directly bo below the screen of your graphing calculator, relates to graphing. We're going to want to graph statistics. So second, stat plot. And here are the statistical plots that we'll have available to us in this course. We'll get into this in a second. For now, let's go back to stat. So I'm just going to click the stat button. And I want to edit a list. I want to input a list of data. So that's what I'm going to do. And notice I already have some data listed here. And I don't want to save this. I want to get rid of it so I can use list 1 and list 2. So I'm going to cl click my up arrow here so that L1 is selected. This stands for list 1. I'm going to use my up arrow to select L1. I'm going to click enter so that my cursor now appears down here. I'm going to select clear and then enter and now it's gone. A word of warning, do not use your up arrow to select L1 and then select this DEL button which stands for delete. That will actually delete the list from memory and it'll be gone. And on some calculators you only have, if you use your right and left arrow buttons, you only have a finite number of lists available. So if you delete L1, it'll be gone, unless you reset the memory of your calculator. Let's do the same thing for L2. I'm going to select L2 so that it's highlighted. I'm going to click Enter, and then when the cursor appears on the bottom line here, I'm going to select Clear, and then Enter. And now that's gone. So for L1, here's my data set for Stronium 90 from problem number 18 in section 2.2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the upper class boundaries and the corresponding frequencies, which was the group frequency distribution generated by Excel. So I'm going to type it in, 119.5, enter, 129.5. And notice every time I hit enter, it returns me to a new entry. Notice how the entries are formatted. L1, meaning this is list 1. What's inside the parentheses says this is the third item we're typing in. 139.5. 149 .5. 159.5. And finally, 179.5 and 189.5.
And now, for each of these upper class boundaries, I am also going to type in list 2 the corresponding frequencies of those classes with the upper class boundaries that I've typed in. So, 2, enter, 2, 5, 9, 13, 6, 2, and 1. And notice the eighth entry for list 2 corresponds or is matched with the eighth entry from list 1. I don't want to mix and match these because they are matched pairs of data. Now, after I've typed in that data, I'm going to quit out of that stat mode. Or for that matter, if you were in that edit mode, you could go right to stat plot now. Second stat plot. Now, we can graph a number of statistical plots or statistical graphs. I'm going to select number one. I can use my up and down arrow to highlight a number. Plot one is one. Plot two is two. Right. So I'm going to select one. I'm going to collect enter. And it brings me into plot one. And I can use the right and left arrows to select whether I want the graph to be off. So if I, you know, if I highlight off and hit enter, notice if I move my cursor off of that using the up and down arrows, it's highlighted. That means this graph is off. If I select on by highlighting it and click enter, now my graph is off. So if I use the right arrow button and then down, now I want to specify the type of graph. This first type is a scatter plot. This is a line graph, histogram, box plot with outliers, box plot without, and then I don't even know what this last one is. Eh, we'll see what it is later. But this is our histogram. So I'm going to highlight it and hit enter so that it's highlighted. Notice if I type any of these other ones, enter. Now the graph is highlighted and the menu changes a little bit. But I want the histogram, so I'm going to select it and hit enter. Now the X list is asking me for the horizontal data, the data that's part of your group frequency distribution that forms the upper class boundaries. Well, the data I input was in list one. Now, if you have a different list, you can access the name of the list below the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Do not type in the letter alphabet L from your green buttons here that are characterized by the alpha. Right? Look, there's an L here. These are different. You want the list. You want list one. So you could say, all right, I want second one, which is list one. The secondary function for button one is to give me list one, the name of it. And then I want the corresponding frequencies for each of those values. Now, if you just have raw data that hasn't been grouped, you could just say one. Oops, sorry. One. That would mean each of these values in list one would have a frequency of one. But what we want to do is to use the corresponding frequencies, the matched frequencies for this data. So I, sec I select list two. And then after I select all these features and enter them, I want to click zoom. I want to change the graphing size so that I can see the graph. And at the very bottom, if I select down and keep on scrolling down, there's a feature called zoom stat. And if I select that by highlighting it and hitting enter or simply pushing the button 9, I get my histogram. And that's how you generate a histogram in a graphing calculator like a TI-83 or an 84.